Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up a gaming PC on Azure. Now this is for remote gaming, similar to what I did about a year ago, but this one is going to use a new class of VMs on Azure that are specifically designed for gaming. So these have AMD GPUs in them, and they're much more in line with the kind of resources you would expect from a gaming machine, such as 8, 16, or 32 gigs of RAM, and they're going to be oriented towards that kind of performance. So this one is going to be very similar, but I'm going to use a different software stack since it is using AMD GPUs, and it is going to use Parsec instead of Steam because that seems to work better with these AMD GPUs. So let's just go to it. I'm going to show you how to install this on Azure. Then I'm going to show you how to install all of the various drivers that you'll need and then set up the PC and then ultimately run a game on this PC so that you can game remotely with any machine, even though the game is running on Azure. So to deploy this to Azure, I'm going to use an ARM template. Now, uh, the last time I did this, I could do everything in the Azure portal, but th for some reason, these VMs didn't show up when I was trying to find this option of VM in the Azure portal. Um, but when I checked on the CLI, they were available to me. So I simply just um, created an ARM template with the SKUs and deployed it that way, and it worked fine. So to make it available to everybody, I just, just made this a GitHub repo, and you can use this to deploy it to your subscription. Now, you don't have to use the CLI like I did to deploy this. It's actually really easy to do with the template, and I'm going to show you how to do it in a minute. If you want to use the CLI, all the instructions are here in the readme, but uh, the easiest way to do it is just hit deploy to Azure, and this is just using a custom deployment on Azure uh, using a template. So you can deploy ARM templates through the Azure portal. And this way, I just populate a simple form here. I'm going to call it GameVM3. That's a resource group. Make sure it's in East US 2 or West US 3 or some region where these are supported. And, and they're, they're constantly changing that. So you'll have to check uh, what regions are available for this particular series of VMs. You want to give it a username and then a password. Um, the username and password have to match the criteria. And I think it's 12 characters for the password. And the password, the admin username can't be admin. It's got to be something else other than that. Um, now, this right here is where you select the class of VM. So if I hit change size, there's three SKUs available right here. Now, it does light up here on this particular uh, wizard, which is kind of ironic, even though it didn't show up in the Azure portal otherwise. And you can see that NG8 is 8 vCPUs and then 16 gigs of RAM and then 16 uh, vCPUs and 32 gigs of RAM and then 32 and 64 gigs of RAM. That's the configurations they have. And then it's got other IOPS and so on. And each one of these has uh, either a fractional GPU or a full GPU. I think this one's got a quarter GPU, this has got a half, and this has got a full. Um, but a quarter GPU in a data center class GPU is a very good GPU. So you don't have to worry too much about that throttling your game. If it's throttling your game and you're not getting decent performance, simply just go up to another SKU. And that way you get more GPU available to you. So I'm going to go with this one and uh, select it. And once you have that, it's just populating these things down here with some defaults. Uh, you can change these names if you want to, but it really doesn't matter. And the other thing I, I, I lit up here is to use spot instances versus uh, using uh, non-spot instances or just regular. I'm going to use spot instances because that's a good way to save money. Um, and that way you're only billed at a fraction of the actual uh, retail price for uh, a VM if you're paying it for it as a regular VM if you don't mind getting booted. If you want your games to be uninterrupted and that's a big deal to you, go with regular. If you don't care, like I do, I don't care. Money's more important to me than gaming. Um, spot's probably fine because I'm not. if I get booted in the middle of a game, I'm not gonna cry. I, I'm, it doesn't really bother me that much. And I'll be like, okay, big deal. I got booted from my game. I probably need to do something else anyway. But in any case, um, set this up like this and hit review and create and it will go through the validation process. And I'm getting some validation errors. Oh, that's why. Um, I've already got a VM out there. That's why I'm getting a validation error. It's not going to let me deploy it, but otherwise it would deploy um, if I didn't have a quota on this. So there's nothing wrong with my template. It's just giving me a quota error here. But if I, if I didn't get that, I'd hit create and it would create a VM. And that takes about five to 10 minutes. And once it's up and running, you're ready to go. And then you can connect to it. So I'm going to switch over to my VM and we'll show you how to connect to it and install the software stack. So once the VM is deployed to Azure using the ARM template, go to the Azure portal and grab the IP for the VM, which in my case is this one, and then launch RDP for or remote desktop connection for that IP address and uh, connect. Now you'll have to go to more choices here, use a different account put in the username and password that you supplied to the ARM template and then connect. And now this is going to launch or the remote desktop connection into uh, this particular machine right here. Now, 
Um, the first thing that we need to do though is with RDP is download all the software that we're going to install. And this is actually pretty straightforward. So over here, let's go to Bing. And the first thing we want to get download is um, a virtual sound card. So just Google or Bing or whatever you got, virtual sound card, and go to E2Esoft and download the virtual sound card right here. And that's just going to download the uh, virtual sound card software to your machine. Next thing we'll need is the drivers, and that's going to be via a link in the video description down below. You can click on the link, and that will provide you with the, the drivers for the gaming GPU that's in the data center. This isn't the standard graphics drivers that you would install from AMD. This is the one that's specialized for Azure, and so you can download that. It's about 640 megs. Next thing we'll need to get is tight VNC. And so type, just search for type VNC and you can download type VNC and, and download this one right here, Windows 64 bit. And then we'll, of course, we'll need Parsec. So you can uh, search for Parsec and then download 64 bit for Parsec. So once you have that, the next thing we'll want to do is install a uh, virtual sound card. Virtual sound card will install um, pretty quickly. That is a pretty quick process. Just run this right here. It's a fairly easy wizard. Uh, go through and install that. There's no reboot required for that. And then after you get that done, uh, install the drivers for AMD. Uh, this package right here will take several minutes to install. It takes about 10 minutes, I think, on this, and it might reboot a few times. So let that finish and just run through that process. And then once that that's all done, after you reboot it and you've reconnected with RDP, the next thing to do would then be to install type VNC. And then tight VNC is um, important to install because we're going to use it to kind of configure this thing once it's everything's um, up and running. So I'm going to go over here to tight VNC, run that, and um, it will um, install tight VNC as a service and so on. And I don't need to reinstall it. But once we're done with that, we have the sound driver installed. We have the AMD dri drivers installed. We have tight VNC installed. Now we can disconnect RDP. And so I'm going to disconnect RDP and I'm going to connect to this thing using type VNC. And then type VNC, I'm just going to put in the same uh, IP address that I used for the VM right here, right here inside of the remote host. And then it's going to ask me for whatever password I use when I set up type VNC. And then it's gonna bring me to a login screen like this. And then I can put in that password that I provided to the ARM template to log onto this using type VNC. Now type VNC is used basically to bootstrap the rest of this process. And usually you're going to need to log into type VNC to start Parsec as well. So now that we're here, let's uh, walk through the Parsec setup and then uh, we'll play a game with this. And there's also some other things that we'll need to do to tweak the drivers just a bit too. So the next thing we need to do is go to device manager and um, on device manager, we want to disable this Hyper-V video right here. Uh, just right click on that and click on Disable device, it's showing enable device because of our disable. Just right click and disable the Hyper-V video. And that's basically gonna force everything over to the AMD GPU. And that way we're ensuring that we're using that for our remote gaming experience. And then uh, you'll want to install Parsec um, and then run par install Parsec from Windows. And that process, it doesn't take long to do that. And then uh, when, once that's installed, launch Parsec. Now you'll need a Parsec account um, and um, when you, I'm gonna log out and log back in, you'll get a screen that looks like this. You'll need a, a Parsec, uh, Parsec account, the, the they're free. You don't have to pay for it. So Parsec is not uh, gonna charge you for the free account. There's also a premium tier if you want like a more immersive experience. But for this, uh, you know, the, the Parsec free account is probably gonna be more than enough for what I do anyway. Um, and then log in with this, with Parsec. And then uh, that's going to um, give me an email login right here. Yeah, it's the right password. And now um, you can see that it's um, up right here. So it's going to show me remote computers, and that's my local PC right here that I've already got Parsec up and running on. But this particular machine, um, I need to change a few things on it to enable it. Um, so on Parsec, we need to set the network right here. And you want to change the client port to 9,000 and then change the host start port to 8,000. 
And that's needed to ensure that the host port will start in a range that is enabled to pass through the NSG that I set up for this particular VM. And so if you set that, I set up ports 8000 to 8010 um, as the host ports so that anybody that wants to connect to this will then hit parsec and that it won't randomly choose one. And the same thing true here, if you want to uh, set a, a desk, uh, source port and you're having firewall issues, sometimes this becomes important. So you might want to set that up too. So once you have these set, uh, the next thing to do is just to uh, go down here to Parsec and you can close this and it'll show up down here on your uh, screen uh, and hit restart and that will restart Parsec. And that will restart with those new port settings. And so once you have Parsec set up and everything is good to go there, you can then install Parsec on your local machine. And I already have that installed right here. And you should see um, your remote machine right here. So if you're, if you haven't already done so, you can, you, you'll need to share it right here, share this machine machine, and uh, that will give you a link and it will light up right here as well. If, uh, if you're logged in. So, um, rather right here, this is my remote machine. This is my local machine. So once I have Parsec, um, set up, I'm going to then, then, uh, click connect right here. And, uh, that's going to connect me to this uh, remote machine and um, it's using an overlay driver. So once I'm connected there, you can uh, disconnect the, um, let's give me an error for some piece of software. You can dis you can disconnect the type VNC session and um, you will, you'll be able to use the, um, the remote session right here, which is what we're seeing. And this is um, what we're uh, looking at right here is indeed uh, Parsec running on the remote machine using the acceleration. And you can kind of just uh, see this overlay icon right here. You can hide that if you want to, but it shows you uh, different uh, different things available to you right here, different resolution. You can do uh, different settings right here. You can choose a codec, you did the decoder, um, encoder, and so on um, for the overlay. And, and this just that's just the Parsec stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna get into a lot of that, but um, once you have Parsec up and running, you have a remote desktop experience using Parsec. So you can minimize that. So once you're in Parsec, you can basically just set up whatever games you want to play. And so for mine, I'm going to be using StarCraft 2. And uh, I installed StarCraft 2 on this using Battle.net. You can install whatever game you want because Parsec doesn't care. Um, Parsec works pretty much for uh, whatever games you have available, if they're on Steam, if they're on Battle.net, or just some standalone client, whatever it might be. So let's play some StarCraft here <clears throat> and launch this. And let's see how well it performs. So I, I use StarCraft as a quick fix for gaming right here. And uh, let me, I am getting audio here. I'm going to turn up just a little bit. See, maybe, maybe it'll come through. And um, so it's not overbearing my voice here. So you can hear it in the background. And let's do a little co-op game here, maybe a custom. And um, let's see what we got here. Uh, let me set one up here. Arcade or maybe... Melee right here. I like a, I like to do like some money maps occasionally just to get a star fit uh, get a Starcraft fix here. This is a good fun map to play. I'm gonna create a lobby and um, come on Starcraft, work with me here. And um, it's creating a game. And let's add some AI to this and start game. And let's see how this looks whenever we get some actual action game game action going on here for all kinds of fun stuff on StarCraft. I know this is an older game, but um, it works for newer games as well. Just you just might have to tweak the the skew depending on whatever um, skew you're using in your particular VM for the demands that your game is going to place on these GPUs. Although these GPUs are pretty modern, so they're not like ancient things. So let's do some, um, let's do some, uh, let's build some stuff here. I have not played this game in a minute, so let's build a simulator and let's go build some pylons over here. Um, and um, let's see where I'm on the map. I'm over here. Um, let's do this guy. Come on over here. And um, I'm over here. 
and uh, build. Let's build some pylons. And so far, everything looks pretty much buttery smooth, as we might expect. Let's jump back over here to see how my assemblers get over. Let's throw some uh, SCV, or rather, these are probes. I'm playing Flotosh here um, on this guy right here. And um, it's building some probes. This is a money map, so resources really aren't a big deal. And let's build a couple of gateways just for good measure. And uh, just have some fun blowing up some stuff here. Maybe I will get rushed by the AI, I don't know. All right, I'm getting some gas, and let's see if I got some, uh, I don't have anything to build yet here. Uh, let's see, uh, more gateways. Um, now, let's build some more piles, maybe some more fields. All right, I got some of my I see I got some of my gateways here. I have to convert those back to regular gateways. And uh, once they're done, I'm gonna start creating some zealots. We'll stack some of those up so I have some defense. And let's just create a bunch of zealots. And let's see, I can build some forges now. Build a couple of those. And. Uh, it's, I can't build anything just yet until I get those forges done. Stack some more probes here. And, and alright, that's good. Let's see, where's my probe? Uh, there he is. And let's build some more of these guys. Get some more pylons. Let's light up my entire base here with uh, some fields. And let's get some upgrades going. That's probably enough of those for now. Let's build some cannons down here for some base D. Uh, cannons, just to light these up a little bit. Some defense here. Just a cheese map here that's just fun to play. It's really not, requires no skill, but it's just a fun map. I like it. I play it every now and then, just a fix, like I said. And, um, oh, ooh. I might get, I might get rushed here. Uh, I got rushed. Yeah, looks like I'm going to lose. Uh, boy, let's see, where's my probe? We got destroyed. Let's do. Let's get some of these going. Maybe I can survive this. I doubt it, though. No. Uh, anyways, I got rushed. It looks like I'm dead. But you can see that it's working fine, and I got a lot of stuff going on on the screen. And the, the experience is pretty much buttery smooth with no lag, nothing at all. So, again, very fun. And uh, while I get my butt kicked, that's okay. This is just for showing you that it actually works. So... Again, gaming on Azure with uh, StarCraft. So if you like it, please like and subscribe. And as always, share the content with your friends. And um, looking forward to having feedback on this. If you want to see more content in this vein, uh, vein, please let me know. I'm always trying to look for new ways to use Azure. And this is certainly one of those ways that I uh, enjoy using it. It's just for light gaming sessions like StarCraft or if I want to play some Diablo or something like that. And I don't have a gaming machine at my disposal. This is going to work just fine. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.